We're going to start with a piece of this song, and I want everyone to ask themselves this question. Who made this? I want you to think about all the different sounds you're going to hear, and think about how many of them you recognize. Listen. If you're having a hard time trying to name the original artist, that's fine, because this song is a remix, or a mashup, as some would call it. Here, original creator Pop Denthology has taken 50 of the top 2012 pop songs and condensed them all into one fantastic eight-minute track of his own. It's amazing, isn't it? But amazing as it is, there is just one huge problem here. This song is 100% illegal, and I'm here to tell you why. So let's actually define what a remix really is. For this, we'll turn to Colin Langshire, an acclaimed scholar of digital technologies, in which he states, Remix means to take cultural artifacts and combine and manipulate them into new kinds of creative blends. Remixing is an art, and is applied to a multitude of genres, other than music, but when it comes to music, portability and accessibility of materials is what allow us for a near seamless workflow of music production. Kind of like these guys at the beach. When we're given access to an astounding amount of existing material through a simple Google search, how can we not be open and willing to expand upon others' ideas when they're so readily available to be heard and explored via the internet? We should be embracing a remix culture. And technology, it's only advancing. The home is now the recording studio. The necessary equipment in creating remixed works is becoming less expensive, and in theory, anybody with some sort of computer system could put together the next hit single. The possibilities sound endless, but unfortunately, they're not. Remixes are ultimately bound to what are known as copyright laws, and by creating any form of remix without permission could lead one into a realm of legal troubles. For instance, this is footage from a remix that I performed live and then put onto YouTube, with no monetization settings in place. Simply because I used a piece of audio from various songs, I received a copyright notice in which I had to acknowledge my use of third-party content. Even for a creative and sharing purpose, I was still infringing upon the existing copyright laws. I can't help but feel a need for change in this regard, and neither can this man seen here. Lawrence Lessig, a Stanford University professor of law who is leading the way of change to our existing copyright laws. Lessig has rested upon the idea of leaving core resources in a public domain where they're free to build upon. This is called Creative Commons, and it's the light at the end of the tunnel for artists like myself. It is the compromise between law and creativity. Its foundation rests upon these few premises. BY, meaning one's attribution rights, C or NC for commercial or non-commercial use, and SA for one's sharing abilities. In a sense, with Creative Commons, one is able to tailor a unique copyright license for the work, and has gained enough popularity that one can even set their Google preferences to search for works under this license. Though this license is gaining popularity, it has yet to become the default in copyright law simply because the music industry fears it may lead to a decrease in profit. But in fact, this may be the change that the industry needs, because as of now, there are no set in stone guidelines in settling an infringement case. The field is strikingly gray, and legal scholar Kelly Conklin knows that all too well. She has posed two remarkable suggestions for current copyright reform. The first is that copyright law should focus on acts that interfere with commercial interests of the copyright holder. And secondly, that copyright laws should provide clear acceptance of non-commercial digital creativity. These suggestions represent the legal logic behind Creative Commons and ensures the music industry maximum profit. These are the changes necessary to enable a greater allowance of creativity in the field of remixing, without hindering commercial rights. It can be done, I know it can, and it's just a balance. It's a balance that we're seeking, and it's a balance that we need to achieve. I'm Ryan McCarthy, and I say we move from the past into the present and remix copyright law.